Okay, so first of all, we just saw this is the Kibra Amram Avinu and Sare Menu. On the other side is going to be Yitzchak and Rivka. That's where the Arabs are. That's the place where they have, as I mentioned, ten times a year we're allowed to be there. Okay, for example, a person of Chayasar, Days of Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Sechot, the Beit Knesset. This is going to be Yaakov Avinu and Leah. Okay, over here, of Adam Arishon and Hava. And we know that there are four. Right? It's our, our but, uh, you know, Zugot that are buried here. The four forefathers of, and mothers, uh, Adam and, right, so we say, Avram Avinu and Sarah Menu, and then Yaakov and Leah, Yitzchak and Rivka are on the other side, and then Aesop's head is over here, and this is Avram Avinu. Okay, it's worth it for you to take a picture of this, okay? Because, first of all, for years and years, nobody was able to go into the Amarat HaMakhtela and see underground. They would only be able to come here, right? So, what, what they did in 1967, as I mentioned, it was divided off, and that area was given over to the Arabs. Now, in the Arab area over here, in the mosque, there's a small opening. There's a small opening. This is how it looks like when you go into the cover of Rifka and Yitzvah. Okay, this is their, their mosque today, that they use as a mosque. And so this is it, okay? Now, as you can see, look over here, you can see it's like one cave and there's another cave underground. Remember I was telling you here is basically where they're buried, right? So it's underground over here. And see now in 1967, when we conquered from the Arabs, so one of uh, the Moshe Dayan was a defense minister, he, uh, he allowed a little girl to go through because there was no person who could go through this opening. So he allowed this girl, her, her name was Michal. He allowed her in 1967 to go through this opening and she went in. Now this is the first time that somebody went in there probably in, I don't know, thousands of years maybe. Right? And she was able to go in, she was able to see. And therefore, she was able to tell them what she saw. Even though it was dark and she had a flashlight, there were no cameras, I don't think. As you can see here, okay, so this is, she saw a corridor, something like this, when she went through here. This is through the mask through their mask, there were like rugs on top of it, okay? And she went through here and there was like a walkway to go down. And, uh, okay, and this is similar to what you're seeing here, okay? And it was underground, there's a cave under this, okay? Now, in 1967, 68, okay? And then later in 1981. I mean, in 1981, remember I told you, Daniel, that there were times when, when the Jewish people have access to the place where the Muslims are 10 times a year. So, in 1981, it was in 1981, there were some guys that, uh, from Hebron, from the area here, they went in, and the Muslim guards, they fell asleep, and they started blowing the shafars, right, because it was a time of sleep, they started blowing the shafar, and, uh, and, and praying very loudly, and the, the guards that were there, they fell asleep, so they didn't know what was happening, and we are very smart as Jewish people, what did they do? They brought in pick axes. And what they did is they knew from 1969, okay, when 1968, when Michal, this girl, went in, they knew about this. So they went in over here and they found side in where the mask is. They found there were rugs on top of it. They pulled up the rugs and they started breaking this. And they were able to somehow go in through here. Uh, and it's amazing. What did they find? They found remains from the time of about, from the Vino, approximately 4,000 years ago. Uh, a powder that was dated to 3,000 years ago. Okay, but they also found other things and uh, bones, they found bones, right? You're gonna see 